short video, we will discuss the Kalmar and the Sterling ratios, how they are defined, the role of the maximum drawdown, along with the advantages and disadvantages of using these metrics. The Kalmar and Sterling ratios measure the efficiency of a portfolio in terms of maximum drawdown. The formula quantifies the return an investor receives in exchange for the maximum risk assumed on a trade. For evaluation purposes, a higher ratio equates into a more efficient portfolio performance. The Kalmar ratio is the average return on a portfolio, which generally is a three-year period, divided by the maximum drawdown of the, that portfolio. The Sterling ratio is very similar and the calculation is the same except in the denominator the maximum drawdown has an arbitrary amount subtracted or added to it. In most cases the amount is 10 percent. The maximum drawdown of a portfolio is a key metric that can assist in evaluating a portfolio's performance. This metric points to a peak to trough decline during a specific period of an investment vehicle. A drawdown is usually quoted as a percentage between the peak and the trough. A drawdown is measured from a time of retrenchment begins to when a new high is reached. If markets are moving upward and then continue to go downward, the retrenchment is not actually re reached until a new high takes place. Once a new high is reached, the percentage change from the old high to the smallest trough is recorded. So in this example, the measurement would come from this point all the way down to this point once a new peak is reached. Both the Kalmar and Sterling ratios bring a new dynamic of risk to the equation and help a portfolio manager gauge risk related to the largest potential annual loss. The returns measured can be at any frequency, daily, weekly, monthly, or annually, as long as they are normally distributed and the returns can be annualized. The advantage of using this metrics is that it focuses on the anomaly, the maximum drawdown, and does not become compromised by kurtosis, fatter tails, and higher peaks. The disadvantage of this metrics is it does not help with portfolio distribution or balance. Overall, these ratios do a robust job in creating a metrics that can be used to standardize risk relative to maximum drawdowns.